I don't care what you tell me. It doesn't matter if you're a junior designer, an experienced designer, there will come a day when you might have to create your own case study from scratch. And this video is going to show you how to do it in one week using my Google design exercise as an example. Hey y'all, welcome back to my studio. My name is Ricardo and I'm a UX designer at Google. So like I mentioned in the intro, there might be a time when you have to create your own case study, regardless of where you are in your career. It doesn't matter if you're an intern or like a person that's transitioning into UX from a different career that needs to create their own case study because they don't have experience in UX. Or you might be an experienced designer that is actually trying to get a job in a field within UX that they don't have a lot of experience in, like maybe AR. So you might have to create your own case study to show that you have the skills to get into that position that maybe your job experience and your resume doesn't reflect. Regardless of the reason, sometimes we might need to create our own case studies from scratch to build our portfolios. So what we're going to do is that we're going to look at a framework that you can use to create a UX case study within a week. And we're gonna use the design exercise that I created for Google when I was applying for an internship as an example, because I created that case study in one week. We were actually required to have it within one week. So a couple of assumptions that I'm making here. I'm not accounting for time to teach yourself Figma. Like I'm assuming that you know how to use Figma, you know enough about the design process to get this done in a week. So this is this does not account for any learning time, okay? This framework will be all about crafting, designing, and formatting your case study so that you can have it all done within that week. Okay, so the first phase I'm calling the discovery and research phase. There are a couple of things that you want to tackle in this phase. The first thing is the why. So understand your goal when you're choosing the topic for your case study. You want to define your audience and the who. Who are you designing this for? Who is the audience for this product? Who are, who are the customers? Who are the users? The third thing that you want to define is the context. Where are the users at? What's the company? What use cases are they trying to solve for? And what's the customer's context? The other thing you want to think about is what are the constraints? What is the MVP for this product? You only have seven days, so what can you realistically achieve in those seven days? Something else that I want you to think about is try to find a case study that ties into your interests as a person and as a designer. So this is a good opportunity for you to let the hiring manager and the recruiter know a little bit more about you. So find an industry or a domain that you are passionate about. You don't want to create something generic like a dog walking app or a food delivery app. So make it unique, make it your own, while at the same time making it a real world problem that can show off your skills. So if we look at the, the case study from the Google exercise, when Google gave us this exercise, they gave us an idea of what they wanted us to design. So for this project, they wanted us to design an experience for new students to browse, search, and propose new student organizations. So. You want to essentially create something like this for you. So in this description, you know who your audience is, it's students, and you know what you're trying to solve for. You want to solve for creating some sort of product that allows students to find and propose new student organizations. So something simple like that is what you want so that the case study doesn't become too complicated. And then what I did is that I expanded on the context by using the university as the client for this particular product. So now by doing that, I don't have to worry about what is the identity, what are the style guides, what is the brand. Ideally, you should look for a company that already exists so that you can reuse a lot of those brand, business needs, business goals, vision in your case study, and that can inform your, your design. Okay, so now that you know or have a better idea of what product and industry you want to design for, you can start to do the research to pinpoint what problem you want to solve within your product and your case study. So what I would do in this next phase is Find some users to interview that could fall into potential customers for that company or client that you're designing for. But ideally, what you want is you want to understand from those interviews their needs and pain points that then you can use to inform what you designed for in your case study. And it doesn't have to be a lot of people, just do two or three, enough to show in your case study that you talk to real people and you leverage the qualitative data from those interviews to inform the direction of your design. Another thing that I 
I would do in this section is make a list of assumptions. What are the assumptions that you're making while putting together this case study? And then later in the case study, you can use those assumptions to test them against the findings and the designs that you're making. So in a design exercise for Google, I did some secondary research and looked at the psychological behavior behind what brings people together. Since we were basically designing an app for students to propose or join student organizations. So I was really interested in knowing what brought people together. And then also looked at what were some of the business needs from the university. What were they trying to achieve? So using all that information, I made a slide with the business goals of CCA and then some of the needs that they may have that this potential new app could address. And then I had a slide with user interviews. Like I said, you don't have to have many. I just pulled three potential candidates and some of the quotes that struck me from the interviews that I performed and also recognized that as a CCA student myself, I had some biases. So I wanted to make sure that my assumptions were validated through the user interviews. Then the following slide in this section, I talked about some of the patterns that I was seeing emerging from the interviews, some of the pain points that students were pointing out and then highlighted those under the emergent needs sections. Basically the emergent needs are those themes that I was seeing coming from the research. So I would honestly say that this section should not take more than one to two days, right? And I say two days just so that you have time to figure out who you're going to interview and how to recruit the two to three people for your user research. Okay, so for the next phase, I would focus on problem and strategy definition. So now that you have all of that research, you can take a look at how the company can tackle the problems and the pain points that you found in the user research. So what features can you build? What new experiences can you create to help solve some of the pain points that we saw in the previous phase? And then you can move on to specify what are the goals of this case study? What are you trying to achieve with this new experience and tie them back? to the pain points that you saw in your research. So you'll see that in my case study exercise, I did not spend a lot of time on this section. I basically had a slide talking about what I did in the previous section, and then I created a mission statement or a vision statement for the strategy of this app. And then I moved on to talking about how I was going to solve the problem. And just like I told you, I basically outlined three different goals for how we were going to solve the pain points that we uncovered in the research section. Basically, these are the use cases that we're going to design for in the case study. You want to think about all of these things while you're in the problem definition phase and start to build your goal statements around those things so that you are starting to put together a cohesive story with your case study. Now, you shouldn't spend too much time in this phase. I would say maximum one day. Okay, so this is y'all's favorite part or maybe not because this is probably the most work. The first thing that I do need to do in the design phase is Hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you're finding this content useful. I'm going to get better at including these call to actions in my videos. You'll see. So in the design section, you want to spend time just sketching. Now we start just sketching and wireframing and just thinking about all of the different ways that you can solve the, the problems that you have outlined. And then also you could do a mini brainstorm with yourself and just basically mimic what you would do in a team environment and show that process in your case study. So once you have your idea, you can start to think about the user journeys that you want to focus on or the customer journeys. What are the edge cases that you need to consider? And depending on the feature or the product that you're designing, you can choose a primary customer user journey and create your case study based on that primary CUJ. Also, depending on how complex your case study is, you can start to create a task model to help you think through all the steps that the user needs to complete to use the feature or complete the task that they're trying to achieve with your product. So then once you have all of that, I would start thinking about the flows, what are the flows that you want to create and start wireframing wire those in mid fidelity. And then at this point, you have to think about which are the parts of the, of the feature and the app that you want to highlight in your case study, right? Because really it's not realistic to create high fidelity user flows and mocks for every single part of the app. And then along those lines, based on how much time you have left in the week, decide if you want to make a prototype, if you want to make animated mocks to show up some of the behaviors and interactions. 
that part is up to you and it's going to be determined by what it is that you want to showcase with this case study. Like I said, this section is a little flexible because it will depend on your skills and on how long it takes you to design something high fidelity. But I budgeted two to three days for the design and ideation phase. So in my design exercise, I talked a little bit about the sketches and the wireframes. I talked about some of the key journeys that I wanted to highlight, but you'll notice that as I go through the slides, I left some of these journeys in mid fidelity. I did not make high fidelity designs for all of them. I was very strategic about which parts of the journey I wanted to create high fidelity mocks because I was doing this in a one week constraint. So I talked a little bit about the information architecture of the app. I talked about the primary journeys to complete some of the tasks that we outlined. For example, I called out how the user would discover tribes. I called out how they would discover campaigns. And I basically went through all of the different features, the landing pages and the different parts of the app that I wanted to highlight and dedicated a slide to them. And also for some of them, if they required a flow, I would show that. And I would also annotate the different parts of the app. But you'll see that in my high fidelity mocks, because I was constrained for time, I used the school colors for CCA. And then I used material design as the baseline for the UI of this app to just make my life faster. And then I finished the, the slide deck with an overview of the different parts of the app and showed them in a mock template so that I can show how they look within the context of a mobile device. And that was it for the design section. So you see, this is the section where you're probably going to spend the most time and where you want to show off your skills. You want to show that you can take something from problem definition all the way to high fidelity design mocks. That means that we have one day left to finish our case study. And what I would do in this last day is essentially spend some time crafting the story of the you, of your case study. How are you going to describe the process? What are you gonna use to uh, share your case study? Are you going to use a website? Are you gonna use a slide deck like I did in my design exercise? And honestly, when it comes down to formatting your case study, you can spend as much time as you want on it until you feel happy with the way it turned out because the way you tell the story of your case studies is going to be crucial to ensuring that the hiring manager and the recruiter understand your project and what you were trying to achieve. I would also add a section with learnings and takeaways to close out your case study so that you can communicate what you learned and potential next steps to neatly package your case study at the very end. And there you have it. That's the entire guide for you to create a case study in one week. Use this opportunity to showcase who you are. Be selective and be intentional about the case studies that you choose to create and let the case study be a reflection of who you are as a person and your values as a designer. And along those lines, don't feel like you need to follow the same process that you see all other junior designers follow. Make the process a representation of how you went about doing the case study. Make sure that your case study is following the product development process and the key parts of the design thinking model that most people are familiar with. But aside from that, make everything your own, make the process your own and change it wherever you think it makes sense to adapt it to what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve with your case study. But don't stop there. Check out my video on the Adobe case study that I used to get hired at Google so that you can take your case studies to the next level. So I will see you all in that video. Bye.